So let's start because we don't have much time. We have only one hour. Uh, comment your beer. We haven't comment on your beer. Okay. <laughs> What's up, dudes? <laughs> I have a lot of people in the chat already saying hi. Hi to everybody. We don't have much time. We have only about one hour. So I'm going to try to scope this in one hour. I'm going to do my best. Try. The idea is I took some of uh, Ben Oliver's art and I have a few reference from the face here, muscles from uh, Anatomy for Artists. For, that is super cool. You can see here. And you can see all the muscles from the head and stuff like that that usually helps if you are going into trouble remembering. So what I'm using here, here what I'm using is a brush, a brush that comes with zebras. It's over here, head planes. You can pick one of these out and already you at least have the proportions of the human head. That's going to help you a lot. At least to start and we don't have to start from a sphere right away. Mm, so I'm going to be by myself on this one. So I need to talk and it's called to try to make it interesting at the same time. It's not easy and also see the comments. But guys, I'm going to try my best. Guys, girls, whoever is watching, I hope you get something out of this. Here you can see it's what well, I'm using obviously the zebras uh, from the guys at Pixelogic. You can check the web. They have actually launched a free version that is it's this, but it's basic, but it's really good for you to at least get familiar with the idea of this method of sculpting. That is pretty different from the usual polymodeling that you can do with other softwares. So what is cool about using this is that you you have the landmarks. I mean, have the general proportions and all that, so you can really speed up your work if you're going to do a human face. Uh, what's up, Thor? <laughs> uh, thank guys, I'm glad you're all here. I'm going to, it, it's not that easy to scope and talk at the same time. I'll also look at the comments. And the fact that I only have one hour, I'm going maybe it's going to be a little bit over one hour, but I'm going to try my best to have something decent at least in one hour. It's not easy because I really have to rush. And it's not the ideal way of working when you're doing something like this. But here I'm just like laying the landmarks. You can say it's super super basic kind of using like this to this reference i really love the way he's pressed and the lines he does you know ben oliver is really good on the illustrations so it's all about like finding the, the forms and i'm going to try to show a few tricks or a few, maybe not tricks, maybe just brushes that I sometimes use that I don't see many people using that I think that are really helpful in terms of like laying out shapes. I know, I know, I see the chat moving on the corner of my eyes, but it's hard to, as to say, but I'm not going to complain about that. Check virtual con guy. I think it's, they are doing some awesome stuff with that. This is like the first stream that they have, so kind of a, a trial. I am like the guinea pig, right? <laughs> the one doing the first one doing this. So I hope I don't disappoint. Hey, don't worry, man. Well, well nice, nice to know that you, you guys are here. We got the, the main landmarks, right? We're going for the cheekbones. Wolverine, yeah, it's, you're not going to see Wolverine until you got those fins, skull. I don't know how it's called. Let's say, let's do it right now so we got something to, to show. For example, this is a brush I like to use for this kind of stuff. This is a cool quad feel. What this brush does is when you have a model like this one that I'm using Dynamesh, by the way, 
this all dynamesh you can see here but no subdivisions right when you have something like that what you can do with this brush is you can draw let's use this as a reference right we can draw this and it's going to give us a shape right what well, it didn't give me what i wanted there we go just split it apart a little bit and the thickness of this is going to depend on the size of the brush so i'm going to go lower and we have what, nine is maybe too low in this case let's go 12. there we go now i have this i'm going to separate it by masking let me see because i have it here but i need to remember where it is sub tool sub tool split it's in sub tool so do there we go split split mask point a eh, mask right so now we have two sub different sub tools that we can use and it's i mean i love this tool it's amazing the way it, it's just super easy you create the shape that you can use right away stretch it a little bit let's see this one for the and all here all these guys is called spotlight you can get it from if you go to the texture palette you load it you get here you import the texture once you import it if you press this button add to spotlight it will create this this is spotlight it's called spotlight and here you can handle all the image at the same time you know you can pick it you can rotate it you can flip it if you want I think it's, it's super cool, it's super useful because you have everything here on Seabrush already. Uh, hello. Dudes, don't make me. <laughs> don't distract me. Come on, guys. I'm just joking. Now, using this, that's the cool thing about Warren, right? It has like such a silhouette. That you already can see like he is getting into there. Just so well designed. But it's super easy to recognize by it's just silhouette. And yeah, I, I, I will try to figure out the thing about the music for next time because I, I think it helps, you know, to have some music on the background. At least I am listening to the music, so. That's good for me, but it's not the same for you. I know that every time I go quiet, I realize that actually there is nothing going on for you guys. <laughs> well, this is something else that I use called the Super Check Brush. You got to hear Super Check. And what it does, it doesn't work in symmetrical mode, but you can do a mirror on well, super easy. So what this brush does is pushes the surface of one subtool into the other one. So you can do something like this. And you have something like that. So if we do mirror well, we have that already. I am rushing, guys. This is not like exactly the way I would do this, maybe, but it's a fast way. We'll see if maybe next time I could add a few more, at least half an hour more. We we'll see. Now we have this, right? Let's see what I don't need this at the moment. I'm going to come with this one. We have one that fears. Fierce look that Warren has. And this is just too. I don't like so I'm going to use the trim curve to cut these points like that. And this works with by pressing Ctrl and Shift and dragging. Get that. And if I press Ctrl and Shift and go the other way, it's going to do that. If I let go and just press alt it's going to create a, a lock point and you can move that if you press it once it's going to be curved if you press it twice it's going to be hard there we go now obviously it's only it's going to work on one side so we repeat that we do go mirror and well as well mirror and well if i'm not mistaken let's see if you press control on any shot key or any button it's going to give you everything that it does and it's going to give you down here in in soft gray, it's going to give you the path. So it's tool geometry, we are well, right? So we go to tool geometry, and here we have where is it? Let me see. 
uh, tool symmetry mirror well i don't see it right now um i know that a lot of guys here know where it is there we go under modified topology mirror well No, what's up, guys? Don't worry about missing as much class. Oh my god, yeah, this, these guys are commenting <laughs> like crazy. Is the usual crew? So, let's see. What's what is let's see? Let me ask, what do you think? Open mouth or closed mouth? I'm going to take a second, open mouth or closed mouth. Come on, guys, now I need you. No, no answer, or it's just 12 seconds too late? Uh, let me check. I'm going to check. Open. OK, I got open. I got open. I'm going to check the email just to see if you guys Send me something. No, we're good. We good. Seems that everything is working. Grind this open mouth, open mouth, please. Open mouth. Okay, so we have three furious mouths, open mouth. We're going to go with open. So because I don't really have the time to model all the teeth, the teeth, I don't know how to pronounce that. Oh sorry, that's something I wanted to show, but it's I can show it for later. Uh, I'm going to Bring some teeth. Uh, ready model. Let's see where they are. Continue fine. Here we go. We have some teeth here and even a tongue. So let's see. Let's position it here. Yeah. That right. Let's move fast, guys. I'm going to carve this shape. Over here. And let's see, let's go for the expression. I got to say, I really, yeah, I think that when we i'm going to do an interview with nate with the guys and i think that maybe i will use that to show something more about serious because i realized that sculpting and teaching all the tools that i'm using is just not enough time i underestimate that over or underestimate i'm not sure how to say it let's do binding like crazy Oh, he's smiling. <laughs> it's all up. So we get there. Now, if you're going to do a smiling face, you need to see a few things that happens here in the face, like this. Other over here goes off. Right? Uh, what we can do just to keep all in the same mesh, so I can merge these two together. Go merge down. So that's going to merge a sub tool that I have with the lower sub tool that I have. Drag up the resolution a little bit. This is going to cause me a few problems. So I'm going to use the H polish. The back face mask. The back face mask is under. Oh, let me go. It's kind of hard to see it here. Let me see. Parampa brush making. There we go. So under brush. You have the um, what is it? What is it? Auto masking, auto masking. Okay, so under brush, but under auto masking, you have the back face mask. That's going to help you to modify something without modifying the other side. This is going to expand this a little bit so it connects with the other mesh. 
I'm gonna, gonna do the new Dynamesh welds everything together. Let's bring this back. This goes away and goes back with Shift S, Shift C, sorry. Press Shift C to get it back. Yeah, it has a big grind, like a, a Joker grind, right? Good, we got 18 minutes, 18 minutes. Now, we has this covering all his nose. And we're going to start doing a little bit the eyes. Now it's a comic, right? So this wouldn't happen in real life, but in this kind of sense, this guy has his mask like completely well to his face and his expressions. At this that I like. Let's see how it kind of gives him a fell in look, like a cat look. In his forehead. And then, there we go. I know it looks messy right now, but they always does. They always do. I mean, they, they started taking shape by the end. <laughs> I like it. Let's take this color away because it's kind of distracting. Got the external credo mastoid <laughs> that everybody knows. Knows that, that muscle because it's so hard to, to remember that I think it's the one that you try to remember the first. Let's see. What do we go? We're going to go with this back front a bit. I'm going to check. Okay, always, okay. So yeah, just like hello there. Sorry, I'm not late, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Dude, it's not the same. I need my coaching. <laughs> See, this I'm not happy with. I think it should be a little bit longer. So let's pull it back. Right, we have this as a reference. I need to remember that we have this as a reference. And that's what I was trying to show you, that we use reference as modelers. We have to try to translate a 2D image into a 3D model. That is a very important part of our job. It's not like you have to create what you want all the time or that you have kind of sort of the idea is to do that because by the moment you get the concept, it's been worked already. It's been worked a lot by the whoever your client is. So unless you are asked to do the concept, stuff like that, that's what what modelers do. That's do what you get. Inflate a model uh, drawing into a 3D object. It's looking kind of weird, right? I'm going to have to polish all this later. See, this is... Uh, might be... Like that. Add some geo here. Yeah, a bit better. Polishing a little bit. All the mistakes I'm making. You kind of look, I feel like frenetic, like going from one thing to the other one. Super fast. There we go. We got this. 
and we're going to work on the mask a little bit. Now it's starting to look a little bit like this guy. I'm going to close it here, like. Yeah, that's good. It's getting there. It's getting there. Oh, I'd say. Full damage bus. Uh, let's check. Oh, I got all on this flap. What else? What else can I show you? Uh, it's not only like the model on the stage. This stage can be interesting for some. Sometimes it's boring for other ones. Kind of like this stage a lot, actually. I like the initial stage when you're finding the shapes. Even when you're doing like a full, full character, the most like in interesting part for me to work is when you're doing like figuring out the pose, the the dynamic, and the general shapes, forms. You know that is the most fun part for me. It's not that actually like the ultra detail part, but I also enjoy like the texturing and. Uh, even in colors, I mean, I enjoy it, but it's not like the, the most fun for me. It becomes like kind of a, automatic a little bit. You're adding the pores and everything like that, the wrinkles. Let's see. Okay, I have a problem. This got too thin. There we go. And I'm hating this. This is driving me crazy. The fact that this is like uh, like changing the shape of the skull. I don't like it. Let's see. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. This way, yeah, it's getting better. It's definitely getting better. I'm going to make his a little bit. I'm going to make give him a little bit more of the body. Let's see. And scale this a little bit. Maybe something like that. I think that's going to help me a lot. Bigger, more bulkier. It's going, this is going too fast. Are you getting what I'm doing? I'm trying talking too much, too, too little. Tell me, give me some feedback, guys. What's going on here? You more blue from just working. <laughs> Her comments from guys asking for all different stuff. Ah, uh, we might. I don't know. Asking to model a, a blue from Jurassic World. That's my friend Marcos. I dude. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just doing it. There we go. I'm going to go here with the eyes. Well, you can do also if you press Ctrl and Shift, you have you get this here. You can like change what you're going to do. If you go with the select lasso, for example, you can Ctrl Shift and you drag. You get this green. You're going to only show the parts that you drag on, right? So now I can only focus on the eyes. I don't think I have enough geo to work on the eyes too much, so I'm just going to lay them out a little bit. Let's see, I kind of like this as a reference. I got this, and I got this. What I like about this, well, what, 
is that we have this shape here that is kind of like a diamond shape in the terms of the eyes. You got this that goes like that, like that, and like that. Not that far, sorry. That's, just, that's uh, something that you have to remember. So here, because this is, you know, you have the skull here. All this cavity and everything here, like the cheekbone and the other one here on top, that I can't remember the name, are supposed to protect your eyes. I don't have big cheekbones, so I don't think my skull is well designed. And I have big bulky eyes because <laughs> so uh, I've been hit in the face and I gotta tell you my skull doesn't protect my eyes as well. <laughs> But in comic books, as you can see here, right? It's always like emphasize. And well, see, we're half an hour in and still really far away. So I'm sure I'm going to end up asking for more time. But I think there is nobody else at this hour like behind me right away. And I am definitely not going to leave this as it is. So what do we got? Let's follow this a little bit. The cheekbone over here a little bit more. I feel like in a, in a race, man. I don't know how the well, the guys at Pixelogic they have a competition. They do some live sculpt of, and it's it's crazy, man. They have three hours to sculpt something super cool, and I've seen guys sculpting amazing stuff in three hours, or sometimes a little bit under. It takes a lot of practice. So. Well, the, the good thing is that they don't have to talk. They can focus. Uh, that's a big difference. Well, usually when I go to when I start sculpting, I, I kind of get into this in a zen mode. You can say like, I don't really like to talk that much. I like to focus on what I'm doing, listen to music, get some podcasts, but I don't usually like to be talking all the time. Unless it's something that is kind of boring to do sometimes. You can you can do it like in a in an automatic way, you can say. This is so unpolished. Well that's kind of obvious, I get it, but The idea is to do one of these each Friday, so I have to level up, man. <laughs> Everything is working from what I'm seeing. I don't see any, no, 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 no YouTube banning or anything. Let's see, let's work on this area here. I'm going to give myself some resolution. See, this is like the amount of polish that I have. If I go a little bit higher with the resolution, I drag and more polish to work with. So I might be able to work on the eyes. I'm going to start like maybe soon adding some color because color helps to see the shapes. In my case, I like to do that a lot. I don't want, I don't wait to for the final model to be done and then start adding color. I usually start like when I'm when I feel like it, I need it. The eyes are too big now. Do that or. I can even mask this part and change, go to masking, holding control, 
I can mask pen. I can paint the mask over here. If I control and click, it's going to smooth. Uh, control click outside the model. And if I move here to the center, if I have this, if I don't have the local symmetry on, if I scale it, it's going to do this. But if I have the local symmetry on and have symmetry with X, you can see the dot on the other side. Scale it, you can see that it's going to hold position. It's just only this one. For now. See that the eyes are a little bit smaller, we don't see here. And let's see. Inflate to give them some volume. The rack. There we go. Now let's see. And delineate like the, the mask parts. And this is still looking kind of funny to me. We add some perspective, it may help me a little bit. I want to go over overboard with the cheekbones. Yeah, let's see, let's try to keep these two. But uh, this one is going to be on front. Okay, that might help. I did the test doing something like this yesterday. That's what I'm going to show you later. But when I so the timeline that it took me, it was around two hours the completion. So I was kind of angry. I was <laughs> because I already set up like one hour streams for the beautiful con. I am hoping this is streaming correctly. It's, everything is working. If not, Nate, Nate, let me know. Me in... Oh. Skibrush, I have to say, is the main software that is being used for the toys industry, you can say. Uh, toys, collectibles, everything. It's, it's super intuitive. It's easy. I know if you come from a different software 3D package, it's kind of hard at the beginning because it's completely different from all the rest. But if you come fresh to it, it's not going to be that hard to learn it. Because I feel like it's, it's pretty intuitive. There are things that you need to know. Obviously, you have to be taught. Like, you can go to the ship, the Epistrologic website. They have a ton of tutorials and reference and how to do stuff. So you can learn a lot by just visiting the website. And you can ask friends, ask people in the industry. It's, it's a big community, and I, I really like the community. People share a lot of information. Oh man, I don't see it yet. It's driving me a little bit crazy here. I think it is maybe too long. And I forgot this is not pointy as it should be. So if we are going for with this, let's do this, right? To try to get the proportions better. What I can do is have this. Rotated. There is here an opacity button. You can go under opacity. Let's see. I know it's completely different, so I want to adjust that. You can go here to the opacity button. Uh, let's see. There we go. Now we can see why it's completely different. Right. One thing that is doing uh, is I'm not doing. Why it's looking. 
it is more oh sorry I'm it's more like that and here I have need to move more than one sub tool I need to move two sub tools this one and this so if I click here you see it's going to show me like a, a stack of stuff they call it pixel boxes but it's not uh, you can see it looks like pixel and one pixel and more pixels so if you if you see it like this it's not selected if you control shift and drag over stuff you're going to see it all selected right so now if i move it's going to move all the sub tools that i have selected here now this feels a little bit better or in tune with the illustration at least oh man i got like i don't know 20 minutes left this is nuts okay i kind of i forgot to activate symmetry let's go back a little bit there we go now i feel like it's a little bit similar and one thing i can do is because this edge is not helping me sorry what i can do is if i use this tool intensity i hold alt and i paint is going to erase what is there so at least i have sorry i have a little bit more space there to see it and that's the difference right i mean the angle was completely wrong and we got the end here is more hard edge we got here these are a little bit and not if they're wrong no i think they are like just like a little bit bigger and the jaw is not at that wide now obviously this is an illustration so there are some lines here that they don't really match to muscles they look awesome but it's an interpretation so if we do exactly the same it might not look really good in 3d so sometimes you just have to know where to adjust where to know how to translate you know you don't have to copy exactly what it is but you have to know how to translate it and using the knowledge that you have you know about anatomy about modeling whatever and that is getting getting closer yeah that is getting a lot closer see i mean like that's like right at the end we're getting close to the finish line and just right at the end is taking his true form so i'm trying man it's not it's not the funny this is not as fun as it looks <laughs> to try to go this fast and explain everything but thanks i appreciate it so this is the cigar the external clay master there this bone this muscle sorry goes to the back of the head like here connects here and it kind of flattens and then bulges a little bit a hard muscle to let me see if I can I got something here right kind of goes see through the back I don't know if you can see it there maybe it's this one here see here and it's kind of flat the thing is that when you turn your neck this kind of bulges out like crazy you can see it like there but it's super like you have to be really tense to show like that. Let's see, uh, something that was cool that I found because I I knew that they were going to ask for the this kind of mouth because I knew now you guys. 
I look for some reference to show this. I mean, this is, I know it's a woman, but it's the same muscles. See? And the tension that she has is super cool here, you know, on the neck. The whole brain should have something like that as well, if he's going all that tense in his mouth. Uh, I don't want to do that. Let's quick save these guys because I don't remember what was the last time I quick save. Just in case software's crash, know that. So it's never the software fault if you lose your job. It's just like you didn't save much. You didn't save enough. But here we have the clavicula. Right. And here is where a lot of muscles attach. Wow, well, a lot, of, sorry. And mostly like the biceps. The biceps, oh my God. The pectoral muscles. Yeah, got an F in anatomy, right? Uh, we got, we got, we got, we got in there. I feel like he's more like square. I'm going to soft here. Maybe this is acute curve, right? This is super useful. When you're using the move tool, you don't have, this is going to be softened, right? When you have acute curve, at least like under, again, bottom pad, brush curve. So it's under brush curve, acute curve. See the difference when I have it on? When it's when it's off, right? So it's super useful for like laying out shapes. That is much faster than just to try to drag that out and polish it. I overdid it, but what you have to try to see when you're using the reference is like the the relationships of the shapes, right? For example, I know that things are wrong here, so let's see. And here, this, see how this is going until the end of the nose, mostly? How you can check that, right? And here is completely far away. But the thing is that which one is wrong? I mean, should I make this tighter, like smaller, or should I make this bigger? So again, you go and you, I don't know, you measure other part, like. Well, it's not not me right now. It's typical. You can say, okay, this one is here. This one is here. So yeah, you realize that. Okay, yeah, I'm going like this. Is going to is is too. Let's make it wide. This I have to say, I'm not a fan. Because all we're wearing is never like showing that much of that. Right? Let's check. And see, it's like always super cover. Maybe I need to make this. And yeah, I think that's going to work better. Let's do like this here. One thing that I like. Slash two is a brush that you can find it on the brushes. You have the slash, you have slash two. Super cool brush. I'm going to turn off RGB because I don't want it to paint. But it does it pulls one side up and the other one down. So it's super useful for doing stuff like this. See the hard edge that it creates. There's a difference between snapshots and plain thing. If there's any difference between snapshot and plain. Sorry, I don't get the question address. And I'm getting to the end of this, so I, I don't have the time right now. We can extend it a little bit after it's done. But not right now, because it's going to throw me away from everything. And I would like to attempt to give it some color. Now what I'm doing here again, I curve 
I can go to this and see it's going to move the corner there. It was getting there. I'm not, again, I'm not super happy with that. But it's what we managed to get right now. It should be all like cleaner and could do a dynamic, a zero measure, sorry, and clean a lot of stuff. Let's see, what can I do fast? I think I'm going to start painting because I can focus on working on the extra detail, the tertiary forms, you can say, the color on. Right. So let's start to do some paint overs. Uh, well, this is a brush for that. You can go to, uh, I don't want to, you can go to here, P, you can have the paint brush, and it's only going to use RGB. I'm going to take the color, just to do a, there. Then I'm going to use some of this blue. It's super cool. I'm going to start to paint it. For painting, you have to have the RGB active. If you have, if you don't have it active, it's not going to paint. And if you have the C, it's going to paint and at the same time it's cold. So be careful about that. It's just to tilt. Maybe a little bit more blue, bluish. Yeah, I think that's better. So let's go fast. There. This is going to take the year. I don't know. I'm not super happy about that shape, but we gotta rush. We gotta rush a little bit. Because I'm like <laughs> 10 minutes away from one hour. So let's see if I can have something decent. Time. Uh, here, let's take some. Oh, the good thing is that the teeth are already painted. That's extra time I've been saving. So we are looking. Let's go with. Mm, let's take, let's see, skin shader. No, I'm not happy with it. Uh, let's take this. Let's give him more diffuse. But what you can do, I mean, there's new tools for masking color or stuff like that. Are uh, like really good, but I haven't used them use them so I'm not going to start testing that now. See, this is super cool, but I have to be honest, I don't know really how to use it right now. So I'm going to go with intensity, so it's going to mask the darkest color. Uh, I can paint over all the yellow matches here. Now, let's I don't know why I do that. If you press the C color, the C hot C key, it's going to take the pick the color. See? So that's much faster. Using shortcuts for me is essential. Like I, I use shortcuts all the time because for me they are super useful and they really speed up your workflow. Let's paint these guys white and we have something kind of decent nice this niche super fast guys it is bad what we're going to do now is trying to start adding some of those tertiary details but first of all you know let's save add let's duplicate this guy just in the case Let's sub tools duplicate and let's give him no let's uh, yeah let's give him more resolution here let's see if he can handle it and we, okay, now I'm going to use the damp standard and to start to give him some extra details. This is 
symmetry because in this case, eyes are far apart and they're going to be under shadow. I don't need them to be completely different from each other. You can use symmetry and then just adjust a few extra wrinkles or whatever in one side and then to the other one so they don't are like exactly the same because we are asymmetrical, completely asymmetrical. I mean, not enough to super destructive, but if you see, if you take a photo of you, I don't know, you flip, you mirror it in the center, you're going to realize that your face is not symmetrical or it might even look like a different person. Here, we got a few things I'm kind of miss. Lips. And same here. The lips go like that. Let's add some color to the lips. Just like this. Just like this. Less intensity. Campaign this. A little bit. And I think it might be too reddish. A little bit there. There we go. That's better. Let's see. Perspective on. Well, I'm now this is driving me nuts. Let's paint this. So at least the contours are not so messy. Everything is messy right now, but we can like how to say it, we can cheat it, right? With the shadows right now. I mean, not for printing. Everything you do is going to appear on the printer. And on the print, once it's done, you're going to see everything. So don't cheat for that. Just doing this for this presentation right now. That's all. It's completely weird because this doesn't happen. I mean, when you stretch those muscles, you stretch this, this goes all tight. I mean, you can see here, yeah, but this goes tight. Let's see, let's see. What else? What else? Fast, come on. It's a little bit better, I think. Still not where I'm going to go, but it's something. Let's take some of the. View. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is going to add some of the. It's, uh, it turns out the details like super fast. Like I'm going to just test a render first. See, it's kind of getting there, right? Um, render. Not super happy, obviously, but we're getting some results. And at like what, two minutes left for the full hour? Let's see. All this extra detail. Well, one, that's something I want to talk about because this is like the idea is to show a model for collectibles, right? So when you do it for collectibles, you have to punch the the detail, the card. When you have doing a line like this, for example, if it's too soft, like what you would do for a m movies or for games, 
it's going to get lost in the printer. Maybe not in the initial print, but it will eventually get lost in the molding and casting. So you have to saturate things a little bit more. You don't have to be so subtle about some things. The problem is that a lot of that comes with experience. And you're going to try an error, you know? Try something, test it out, print it, and you will see that, oh, it's lacking detail, or it might look right, or detail enough in the print, but then after just a few copies of the model casting, just a few copies after that, the details might get lost. So you want to exaggerate that a little bit. Oh, let's add some of these guys, some pour, some maybe it's kind of like a beer. Um, let's give him some a little bit of color. I'm not that happy with. There we go. Oh, yellow, no, I don't want yellow. One minute left. So this is what we got. I don't think, <laughs> I think I'm going to need a little bit of extra time. Ah, God, sorry, I don't want to curse. This is what we got in one hour, Mark. Oh, let's do something fast, so it might help the look. Oh, and you, come on, let. uh, let's mask this, here we go, Show it. and Please, one hour mark. Yeah, it's not the best size, but I'm happy that at least I got to got the overall shapes. So try to get it darker, and let's go for black. Some perspective, fifteen a little bit more. Take this shadow here and let's flip your rid of it. Hey, Barry. There we go. We have something here at least that is unmistakably Wolverine and kind of follows this. I did my best. Ben, sorry. <laughs> I don't know, Ben. <laughs> I wish I knew he, he's super. His work is amazing. I love the way he portrays superheroes. There we go. Now, from now here, from here on, it will be all like mm, extra polishing. Like going really deep, and maybe you end up changing a few things. Maybe I don't know. This should you think that this should be a little bit bigger or, or wider? You know, you start. You will get like um, for Macayan, you will start getting your feedback. You can say. And that feedback can be anything. It could be like, um, I'm not that happy with expression. Maybe you have to make it tighter or, or I don't know, change the teeth a little bit, make them more crooked. Now, this guy, in this case, I have, like, it's all sub different sub tools. I mean, they are in the same sub tools, but they are different geometry. So if you go to auto groups, go to auto groups here, you can see here that they are all different tools, different objects, so you can move it around. And if you had the move topology, you set it to one, what you can do is you can do this. You can move objects in the axis that you, on your, of your screen, right? So if I go here, I go that, you can do that with your teeth. That is super fast when you want to move things. Take that as a, as a tip, because it's super useful. I use it all the time. I mean. If I need to move, if I would need to move this and you didn't have that tool, I would have to go here, mask it or I isolate it, and then go in with these guys and then move it. And it would be, it would take me a few seconds, quite a few seconds. And different than this, I just take it and just drag and move it. 
You can do it with it's the regular move, okay? Regular move will move only one vertex. If you go to move topology and you do that, yeah, you got it. But let's see what rain with not just not in a fight. A pretty big bad fight. Oh he's pissed. So uh, we did it. Right? We got it. <laughs> yeah, you want to see some polishing? The thing is that yeah, the I should be finishing the stream because I got stuff to do. If you want some polishing stuff like you can do, like let's say I got this, right? And yeah, I can keep it in dynamics or whatever, but it is basically a symmetrical uh, model. So I usually like to do the zero measure stuff. I go, I, would, I don't have polygroups, so I don't have to keep them. You know, just test out what, what I like about the settings. Let's go with 20 and let's add 50 and let's test. Now I just did a copy, okay? Because I want to, I will project what I got on the top. So I'm going to go for with symmetry on because I did a few different things, but I can redo them. It's not a big deal. I can go with zero measure. Let's give it a second. Thank you guys. Hey, thanks all of you for being here means a lot to me for real because I've been doing all these streams, but with a friend, Kochi, I love you, brother, but I need to start doing them by myself. <laughs> and the, all the streams that I did before this one, they really helped me out. And you guys being here always like, encourage me to keep doing the stuff. Let's see what it does. Come on. I promise I'm going to figure out the music stuff because I feel bad that I'm listening to music and you guys are not. See, there we go. Now we have a kind of a fairly clean topology, like really good for for printing, guys. This is not going to be useful for animation, games, stuff like that. You gotta learn that. So, sorry. So let's in case we save this. Remember to save. It's getting heavy because I got a lot of dynamics and streaming at the same time makes everything a little bit heavier. Now I'm going to divide this guy one, one time. I got my polygon here, so I know that it's 178 millions. This one is over two. No, it's not millions, it's K, sorry, 170,000. This is over almost three million. So let's so divide one more time. We got there. And now we got almost the same amount of polys. So I'm going to store this. This is store, this is morph target. So we can go to, let's find it, Franco. There we go, morph target, store morph target. And we go to, I'm going to try to do it here so you can show you guys. So we want to find the project. Uh, project, there we go, we have project. And we're going to project all. We, not all, sorry, I'm going to hide the teeth because it's going to try to project those teeth. I'm going to active this layer, this subtool is, in this case, above the one that I, I am currently using. I'm going to project all. It's going to ask me, uh, this has polypane, do you want to project polypane? In this case, yes, I want. And let's see what it does. Remember, I saved the morph target just in case everything, something got broken. I can just morph it again and fix that fairly easy. Mm -hmm. This usually takes some time. And as I said, because I'm streaming at the same time, yeah, it's taking some time. Let's check if I have, yeah, I got something. Yeah, So we're good. I just got confirmation that everything is going really good. So this is going to take a, oh, there we go. I feel it was going to take a little bit longer. 
There we go. So now what we have, different from the other one, the solo mode. Ah, one thing, sorry, guys, I didn't realize to tell you is I use solo mode a lot. Is this here. If you have different subtools and you have solo mode on, it's only going to show you the subtool that you're currently on. So I have the hotkey A for that. So I do it all the time. Same with a lot of brushes that you've been seeing. A lot of them are like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can see them here changing. Now we have this. This is magical, right? Because now we can go and get um, go to the lower subdivision, and it's easier to modify bigger shapes. Like This happens all the time that I'm doing a work brain. And I try to do this super method, and this happens all the time. I need to figure out a way to do it better. Um, so now, if I would like to polish all this, I can start like working really closely and really pay attention to everything. Mm. The good thing is that what I can do now uh, that I have this model, this um, topology, sorry, this model with multiple subdivisions is that you can do a UV map. And that UV map lets you add noise that is translated as texture, basically. So let's see if I can do something super fast to show you guys. I mean, this is all messed up, right? You, you get, I hope you get that. This is not like the way it should be, it should be more like this and it should be work more. Let's see, let's grab this like that. And I have a mask on. So if I press Ctrl and W, it's going to make a polygroup. Let me show you. See, it's a different polygroup now. So what I can do is under the sub the C plugins, you have this called Squid Save again, just in case. We can go to the UB Master. I, lo I love UB Master I, because I always hate to do the UBs. I know I know how to do them, but it's not it's for me it's not it's super technical. So this is good enough. I can go to the UV master. I need to clone this because I'm going, this model I have, it has subdivisions and it's not going to work with subdivisions. So you have to work on clone. See, this creates me a new model. You can see it's over here. See here, you can see it doesn't have any subdivisions. I can activate the polygroup and then I can go on unwrap. One thing, I'm going to by this one polygroup more. Let's use this mask. If I use this mask and I press Control outside, the, if I press it on the model, it's going to paint it. But if I press it outside the model, it's going to do this square. So I'm going to do that. Let's do it again. So I give it a different color. I'm going to do that. So I have a third group. I like that it's symmetrical, but I want it to be one more edge, one more polyline. So if I press with Control Shift on them. Polygroup, see, it's going to select it. Press Control Shift, select the model. Now I press Control Shift and X, it's going to expand by one poly. So I need this one, I don't need this one. So the way to hide this one is Control Shift, and I press on the vertex, and it's going to hide it. So Control W again. Now I have three polygroups. Mm, this I want because I want these two fans difference, so I can do, do some texture on them. Let's unwrap. Mm, yeah. And see, it works. So if I go to flatten, it's going to show me what it did. See? Now, I don't want this to be like totally different from each other. You can tell that this is the face. So I'm going to select it. As isolated, if you go to Control Shift and select, it's going to do, do the, if you do Control and do this, it's going to do that. That's better. If you go to Control and you press on any, any polygroup, it's going to mask the rest and leave you with the one that you selected. Now, let's position it like that. I'm going to 
and flatten copy the UV because this is not the model I've been working on. This is a copy, remember that. Then I'm going to look for the model I've been working, it's this one. This is very important. You have to, if you have color, you have to have the paint uh, visible. Because if you don't, and if you apply the UVs, you're going to lose that. Now paste the UV. Give me, give me something. I didn't got the chance to see it. Let's check if the UV is working. It is working, but it's too small. It's, I think it's that's what it's telling me that the UV map is too small. So you just go here and you select 4K, 2K, wherever you want. Now I'm going to go to the noise maker surface noise. And we can see here that you have this pattern. Right now, it's just color. So let's take the color blend to zero. I have to apply the UV as I mean to use the UV. Here is the UV I'm going to use. And see, if I play around with this, I'm going to have some texture on the model. Now, the cool thing here, you can play with the depth. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do. And a cool thing that you can do, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it right now because uh, with this software, if I open the, uh, the Internet Explorer, it might show something that I cannot show. So, but if you need a texture, is this is weird, guys, but is he, here where it says alpha on off, here, if you press there, it's going to open Internet Explorer, sorry, not Internet Explorer, Windows Explorer. And there is where you pick your texture and you drag it in here. Okay, did you got that? I know it's weird sometimes, I don't know. You have to go to here, this little button here that says alpha on off. If you press there, you're going to get a Windows Explorer and that, that is where you're going to find your texture. So let's see. Let's make it something like that, just because it's just to show you the workflow. It's not something to, it's going to make it look nice. I press OK. I know that the, the fact that we did the UVs, it will be better to show it with that, but for next time, because I don't want to show anything. But let's do something. Let me give it a second. Let's, let's do it like that. Give me a second. I'm going to go again, go into that button that I just told you. See, the thing is that I have a lot of folders here that shouldn't be shown. Um, I'm looking for the texture, pixel washing, zebras, alphas. See alphas, we could, right? I'm not seeing anything, right? I'm going to get a letter, 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 letter. I'm not seeing anything. I'm good, I'm good. Don't worry. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. Okay, we're going to use this one. Let's go back. There we go. Now see here, I have the texture that are like a leather texture. So let's see. See, you have the alpha, right? This is alpha scale. I'm going to scale it down. The noise, mix noise, I'm going to take it all away because I don't want the noise. Just want the alpha. Scale it, scale it. I don't know, let's do it like that. Well, here I changed it too much. Maybe I need to reset this and then I can adjust it a little bit. Maybe something like that, I'm good. And now the alpha is working correctly along all the face. Now you say, yeah, I don't want the alpha to be everywhere. So what I can do is I can mask what I, what I want the alpha to be. Go here and do all this. We're going to go until 30, okay? After that, I need to cut this one. Uh, but I just go notice that I can do them as long as I actually want because there is nobody after me. But, spend time with the wife. 
with my wife. I need to finish some work. I need to do a lot of stuff. Let's go and let's just mask all this. You have to be thorough about it, right? See, we're going fast, but you get it. You get it, you get it. I know you get it. Let's see, something like that around there. This is like when actually the guys that do the painting of any kind of figure, if you see that there's a sideshow video recently super cool about how the case love that is one of the best painters out there paints the venom the new venom that they release you're going to see how they they mask the parts that they want to protect from some tone or something and they basically do this but in like with real materials so let's take these guys they use tape stuff like that to mask off stuff is complicated stuff. So we're getting there, we're getting close. Yeah, this is I don't know why I was masking the eye all by itself. Oh yeah, I know. I know why. But don't worry, I can fix that super fast later. I'm going to invert the mask, and now I have all the texture only in the part that I masked. And let's do the same here, super fast. Whoop. That. Fix it. Mask this. Control Shift. No, sorry, Control Alt. I don't even remember the shortcuts. Control Alt makes the mask inverse, right? If I press control and just draw over the surface, it's going to mask it. If I press control and alt, it's going to unmask it. But that, see, that's why I was masking the eyes because the eyes shouldn't have leather. Now there is one thing that you should do it's going to keep you from being uh, destructive in the workflow is that you can create a layer. Now this layer is going to be useful because you're going to have the texture in a different layer. Think of like Photoshop or something like that. Uh, what we can create is just in this case, because this is for now, this is like a preview, right? If I turn off noise, you don't see it. It's not apply. So I'm going to create, save and store a new morph target because if you remember the last one we store, it was when we didn't do the project. So I'm going to store a new one, create a new layer. Here, I'm going to activate the noise and I'm going to apply the noise. Recalculating. Oh, my music, finish. See, it's done. There we go. I'm going to clear the mask, control drag, and now you see that all the texture is applied to what I want it to be applied. And if I use the morph brush that you got here, morph brush there, I can, if I see something that is wrong, I can clean it up. The case that is, I mean, if I did a mess, you know, with the masking. Mm -hmm. And something else that you can do here, you have to be on record because if you are not in record and I try to do something, once you turn on the layers, you always have to keep working on layers. So see, I try to do something I can't. I'm going to show you the layer. You can see, you can turn it up. You can do it like that. And if you need this to be more tight or, uh, or you know or deeper whatever you can duplicate even duplicate this layer now you have two layers doing this so you can see the difference with one and with two going to delete the second one it's too much now i need to 
keep working on this guy. So I'm going to, instead of keep working on that layer, because I want that layer only to control the this texture, I'm going to create a new layer. And now I can keep working on the guy. And that's how you make textures inside ZBrush. And I'm going to close it there because if not, we I can keep working on this forever, guys, to be honest. I kind of love doing this. Oh, it's masked, right? Yeah. There we go. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed the stream. You learned something. I'm going to be doing this every Friday for the Built on Gone, guys. And uh, it's just going to be just right here. So I don't know, click the bell, give it a like, whatever you want. Uh, check out the website. Let me show you to you again, guys. Whoop. Built on Gone. Check out what they are doing over there. It's super cool. And that was it. That's it. Uh, thank you all for being here. I still don't have a way to finish uh a broadcast so i usually just like say that's it bye bye and just end this broadcast like super suddenly <laughs> so big hug guys uh, thank you adrian for that one <laughs> and see you on the next friday at 2 p.m new york time and 8 p.m spain time bye bye